Hey everybody, welcome to What Did Jesus Say? The Greatest Teacher of All Time. I'm Billy Jordan and I'll be leading this class today. If you're following along in your books, we'll be on pages 58 and 59. And uh, what greater teacher to learn then from then as Jesus Christ. And we'll get on into our Bible study today. And the first one is, I asked for bread and I got a stone. And that is from Matthew 7, verses 9 through 11. Matthew 7, 9 through 11. And it reads, Who among you, if his son asked him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if, or if he asked for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask of him? You know, as the text clearly says, we're not going to give our kids bad gifts. We're going to give them good gifts. Um, I know that I try to give my child a good gift on occasion, and I know that in our congregation, the Crimson Campus Ministry Adopt a Student Program, I'm sure that, that many of them get really good gifts. But, but why are we giving good gifts to those um, folks? And that's because we love them. You know, one of the marks of being a disciple is is love and as spelled out in John 13 34 and 35 Jesus says by this you'll know that the, the world will know that you're my disciples if you love one another and God gives us every good and perfect gift according to James 1 17 and 18 so um, question number one what things can the father give us um, some physical things he can give us is life, health, um, friends and family, um, possessions, um, food. But what about some spiritual things he might can give us? He can give us salvation through his son. And because we have that salvation, maybe he can give us peace. Maybe he can give us a spiritual family. We call that the church. Um, I'm sure there's many other things that y'all can think of and that you will think of this week but but of those things what do you think is most important do you put physical things above the spiritual um just think about it i would hope that you put spiritual things above the physical but just meditate on that this week and then the third question does god ever give us anything we need but we haven't asked for and i'd say yes you know Maybe there's a situation where you're not necessarily looking for education or a job opportunity and one just happens to fall in your lap. Or what about um, somebody asks you to be a part of a church or different kind of program. You weren't really looking for it, but you decide to do that. What if, what if you needed that and later on you, you realize that's what you need, a song? that uh, comes to mind is an old country song by Garth Brooks called Unanswered Prayers. And in that song, it talks about this guy and his wife going back to a football game and the guy runs into his, to his old girlfriend. And at the time in the past, when he, was, when he was dating her, he asked God every night that she would become his wife. But God didn't have that in store for him. He gave her, gave him his wife of today and he realized that that was all a part of God's plan and what he needed and in the chorus it says sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers remember when you're talking to the man upstairs that just because he doesn't answer doesn't mean he don't care because sometimes God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers so God gives us what we need even if we don't ask for it or he can um, a prayer that could go along with this thought is Dear Lord, may we ask for those things that please Thee. Help us draw closer to Thee each day. Um, the second devotional thought of today is the golden rule, and it comes from Matthew 7, verse 12. Matthew 7 and verse 12. And it reads, Therefore, whatever you want others to do for you, do also for them, for this is the law and the prophets. You know, treating others with kindness is the true mark of a Christian because it mirrors the Father's grace towards all his creation. Um, no wonder it's called the golden rule. When God's children practice it, they become more like him. Uh, 
song that comes to mind is A Beautiful Life. And in the first verse, each day I'll do a golden deed. Um, you know, what golden deeds are you doing to help others um, to draw closer to God or stuff like that? Um, we can find the moorings of this New Testament principle in the long ago old covenant law as well as in the prophets. You know, how is it some enough the whole law and the prophets? Jesus explains that in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, when he says the greatest commandment is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. If you go back to the law, some of the commandments are towards God. You know, have no other gods before me. And then others are towards your fellow man. You know, don't murder, don't commit a, adultery, things of that nature. So by us practicing the golden rule, we're fulfilling all of the old covenant and moving on into the new covenant. Um, another verse that comes to mind whenever I'm thinking about the golden rule is from Ephesians 5, verses 28 and 29. Ephesians 5, 28 and 29. And of course, those of us who are, who are married know that this talking about husbands and wives um, physically, but it's also talking about Christ in the church. But Ephesians 5, 28 and 29, and it reads, In the same way husbands are to love their wives as their own body, he who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own flesh, but provides for it and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. So, you know, we're not going to hate our own selves. We're going to take care of ourselves. So if we want to take care of ourselves, we should show others that same care as we would have for ourselves that maybe one day they can um, be brought to Christ, maybe. Um, a meditational thought for um, this thought or this devotional part is, what blessings have you received as a result of practicing the golden rule? Um, think on that. Maybe you've had a enemy or somebody you didn't really get along with at work in the past and you showed them kindness and stuff like that. Maybe they became your friend later on. I'm sure there's many other things you can think of personally, but just think about that. Um, a prayer that might go along with the thought of the golden rule would be, Lord, help us treat others with kindness. Teach us to be busy about busy in the Father's business. Um, in conclusion, one way of practicing the golden rule is to give the greatest gift of the gospel, and that's that Jesus came to this cruel world, lived as a man, he died on the cross so we could have forgiveness of sins, he was raised on the third day, and um, so that we could have salvation. And now that you've heard the gospel, according to Romans 10, 17, I hope that you believe it. And that's according to Matt, I mean Mark 16, 16. Uh, if you'll repent of your sins, turn towards God, that's according to Luke 13, 3, and, and confess those sins and confess Jesus before all witnesses, according to Matthew 10, 32, and then be baptized, according to Mark 16, 16, and Acts 2, 38. You can become a Christian, a follower of Christ, and I, I hope that you would do that. Um, but... In conclusion, again, I hope everybody's had a good study. Keep the faith, as Brother Greg always says, and until next time, I'll see you. Thank you.